Hello my lovers, I do hope you're well. Flem here coming from my second channel and I want to talk about Aizel Mazard quitting veganism and he's not quitting being vegan, he's just quitting the vegan movement and it seems to be uh, because of uh, a failure on his part, albeit through, um, I don't know how he frames it, he, he, it, it seems more so that it's a refusal on other people's part to work with him for whatever reason. Um, you know, he talks a lot about how he, he he's always just wanted at least five or ten people who he can work with, collaborate with in real real life, in real time, in order to make what he calls a positive difference in the world. And, uh, you know, I understand the frustration and I just want to talk about this because, um, you know, whatever you may think of him, whatever you may think of his conclusion, I think uh, it does reign true for what the community is like. And a lot of the time there is a, a failure to um, kind of work together, set aside the differences um, in methods. And I was talking to uh, ask yourself about this, actually. We were having a discussion about uh, methods of, of, of activism or methods of advocating for veganism, essentially. Um, because you know, it, just because I mentioned him, like ask yourself, for example, he doesn't do activism. He is just trying to formulate the logic in order to aid people with advocating for veganism. So he's taking the role of a teacher, essentially. Um, but I was saying to him that I, you know, I'm very much in the past, I very much was a person who would critique people's methods um and formulate that as if that were the truth formulate rather that my feelings um towards the actions were the truth and that's something that a natural vegan for example <laughs> she does she uh she behaves as if because she feels that that, that thing isn't effective it's bad <laughs> and i very much uh, was guilty of that. I don't know if I am now. I don't think I am. I hope I'm not. Um, but that's what I was saying to him. I was saying, you know, your method, for example, uh, isn't one that I would agree with. I take the, the kind of nicer, nice person approach. Um, but beforehand, I would have critiqued it. But now, really, I can't... One, I can't actually prove if it's not effective. It's just not effective for me and people of my personality type. But at the same time, <laughs> it, I can say that it's not all I want, but it actually is. You know, that you, there are many different types of people in this world, and I'm not saying um, humour every single type, but just, you know, cater to all of them, because some types of people are just genuinely awful, and I'm talking like, you know, murderers and so <laughs> Like, you know, don't cater to them. Um, but, yeah, you, you can't prove that that thing isn't actually... Uh, ineffective unless you you know go out and uh, study this <laughs> like you know formulate something that can uh, measure whether or not it's effective if you can't really demonstrate that it's not effective then you can only really go by your feeling and inclination that it doesn't work um, but my point is because I've, I've waffled is that we do have a tendency to tendency rather to behave uh, as if our feelings that something or our concerns that something might not be effective we use that as a conclusion rather than a hypothesis so yeah I, I think there's too much of that and that gets in the way ultimately of collaborating Eisel, for example, I've spoken to him, uh, I speak to him in on Facebook and we, we keep in touch quite often and he and I are very different people. <laughs> we're very different. You can just tell from a kind of superficial standpoint that we're very different. And we have quite different methods, quite different ways of speaking to people and quite different lifestyles. Um, and sometimes he'll do, he'll do things and say things that I don't agree with. And sometimes I do things that he might not think are very effective. Um, but, you know, he has never, you know... Uh, like, he'll give me suggestions of what I should probably do, feedback, that sort of thing. 
but he's never told me you ought to do this because this is trash and I refuse to speak to you and I refuse to work to, with you because I don't agree with this and I don't think it's effective and I think there is too much of that and because of that we are failing to really come together and uh, you know just and this is just the case for everyone like even people who want to collaborate I think sometimes when they end up doing so there is there is a clash and uh, it's, it's just so much and it's just like well how do we build a positive movement if we're so busy like um just trashing each other <laughs> like um there's an example of this i don't want to you know because it's kind of secret tea but this person essentially refused to come to an event and speak about their advocacy because someone else was going and they thought that they were like a fascist or an, an, an apologist for some political movement they didn't agree with and I was just thinking hang on so they're refusing to advocate their message which could potentially inspire people who might not even be part of their their message and, and resonate with that that they've given up that opportunity they've given up that platform because of someone who has an opposing viewpoint to them like isn't that like the opposite of what you want to do <laughs> surely you would want to go on a platform and preach your message in order to uh reach as many people as possible why would you give that up and and that's you know even that is something that a lot of vegans um not a lot rather a few vegans uh will do but a lot of vegans will just not collaborate with anyone they won't team up and you know there's strength in numbers and that's a problem i see with vegan youtube for example is um everyone is out for themselves they have their own platforms they don't really want to work with anybody else there are a few people who are doing this um, and you know, you know, giving the shout out, and it, though it might think, oh, you're just kind of like begging to for someone to uh, um, find you through them, it's, it's not even a case of that. It's a case of you know coming together, having that sense of community, because we call ourselves the vegan community, but sometimes there's there's kind of a lack of one, and I think it's a real shame and eyes or whatever you may think about him he has definitely tried he's reached out to even more people than i've reached out to and i have a solid um ideal that we should be collaborating with each other we should be sharing other people's ideas and i do believe that i do a lot of that on my channel um but even though he doesn't you know so much give people the shout out per se he does behind the scenes really try to reach out to people and uh for whatever reason there may be, people do turn him down or they don't want to work with him. And, you know, a criticism of Eisel is that he is, you know, he has high standards and that nothing will please him. That's so what nothing, that, that's what he says um, in one well, recent video, that people do believe that he wouldn't be happy with anything. Now, he is a big critic. He will critique a lot, okay? He critiques far more than I personally would say <laughs> is a good idea um, but at the same time I think that you know he I can't really blame him it, it, it's, it's horrible to get the door shut on you especially when you want to get into motion if you have a lot of passion you have a lot of knowledge and experience in a field then you want to exert that like you spend all that time learning about these things the reason you learn about them is so that you can utilize them and if you can't then utilize them it feels like a waste of potential which is especially if you're someone who wants to make a positive difference in the world an incredibly disheartening journey to venture and it's just a real shame um what do i what do i think really he should do i think he should do what he needs to do whatever he thinks um will he'll be able to make a positive difference doing he should 100 percent do because that seems to be what drives him in a lot of the things that he does um you know i i don't personally agree with some of the things he says or the way he goes about things but at the end of the day he's got to do what he's you, you know he's got to do what he thinks 
will make a positive difference. And if he feels like there is a stagnation in the vegan movement, if he feels he's said all he needs to say, if he feels as if he's repeating himself, if he feels like there is nothing else to come of it, if you've exhausted all of your options, then what really do you have to do except move on? And uh, I think that, like, I, you may think that I'm naive, and this may be true. I think, you know, I, I'm running on hope really more than a, a prediction of what will actually happen. Because to be honest with you, YouTube is constantly falling down a well. It's just doing it very slowly. Um, I don't know if the platform will improve. My, my thought is no, it's only going to get worse. Because uh, it does every single year. Um, but I am of the viewpoint that the community will improve. It just takes people to wait it out, to really fight the fight for a very long time because so many of the people in this movement have made it a challenge, i.e. they, <laughs> i.e. they have, um, you know, engaged in absolute pseudoscience, like Sunfruit Dan with his turpentine nonsense. Like that is, there's a, there's a mess that we need to clean up. It's it's not easy. It's not easy, um, and it really takes people who want to collaborate, who want to move past it, who want to interject some. I don't want to say common sense, but interject some, you know, more logical thinking. It takes people like that to really change the the uh, the environment of of vegan YouTube, and I believe maybe out of naivety or hope that it will positively change. And if it does, if I'm right, <laughs> then I believe that Izel will come back. But, and I, I don't believe he'll truly, like, this is my feeling, I don't think he truly will leave. I think he will see things and comment on them because, you know, if you see a problem and you are someone who wants to make a difference, you can't help yourself. <laughs> You just can't help yourself but comment on it. So I don't think he truly will leave. Not to say that I don't believe what he says and that he talks rubbish. I'm not saying that. But I think, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, if he really wants to make the positive difference, which he does, I believe, then I don't think he'll be able to help himself. <laughs> I think he will comment on things. It's just he's been a critic of... A few things in in particular ie dxe and nothing has really come of it and people are still responding to it incredibly negatively um and that after a while can be like well why am i even here why am i even talking about this because you know it's um nothing's coming of this it feels like you're you know <laughs> to adopt peter's phrase instead of flogging a dead horse it feels as if you're feeding a fed horse. <laughs> but, um, no. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of uh, videos Eisel puts, puts out that I don't agree with the message of. Uh, there are a lot of things he says that I don't necessarily agree with. But at the same time, there are a lot of videos of his that I thoroughly enjoy. A lot of, uh, you know, knowledge I have t obtained from his channel. Uh, so it is a shame to see that he... he likely will not talk about veganism anymore and i i do agree that the leaders in our movement are well not all of them like there are a few who i i really do enjoy and believe are making a positive difference um in an optimal way because i'm not saying they're not making a positive difference but um i think it could be furthered it could it, be, it could really be improved um but uh, yeah i do look at some of the leaders and I'm kind of confused <laughs> like why are you in charge like who are you to uh, talk about this like but um yeah that can be frustrating and I do understand that frustration because I too do tend to feel that frustration because within me is a boss <laughs> a bossy leader whatever you want to call it um there is an inner voice that's very um wants to take charge there is and so it frustrates me sometimes that i'm not i don't know it maybe comes from a place of jealousy for me 
you know, I, I probably, I, I get jelly a lot. Um, and then that can lead you to kind of feel hopeless about your own ventures, your own work. Um, I don't know what Isa was truly thinking, you know, I can't read his mind. But, yeah, it's just, it is a shame. Um, so many vegans have, vegans I, I've really loved, I've really appreciated, you know, or not loved, but, you know, loved the work of have had left and some absolute garbage ones have remained and, and just will not leave <laughs> and it's just a shame to see it's in that order and it's not the other way around but I think what we can do the only thing we really can do is just stick it out um, unless we have nothing else that we feel we can offer um, but at the end of the day at the same time you still got to do what you got to do so I don't know what you think, let me know, uh, love to Isel, and uh, yeah, until next time, I'll see you soon.